Hi everybody, we are here for a slightly different edition of a Thread Thursday and um, what do I want? I oh, was just working out which order to do it in. Alright, so while I was away with Huss we went up to Sale and we visited the Gippsland Art Gallery and there were two artists that we saw there that I absolutely loved. Now Penelope Davis has a kind of a jellyfish exhibition so they were hanging all through and it was the manipulation of plastics and I'll get to that at the end so it's going to be at the end that stuff now before I go any further what I want to show you so Huss brought back some let's start with this one so from Somalia now he didn't know what the materials were so this feels like a they feel very they're very very soft so this feels like a silk cotton type of a thing could just be cotton but a soft cotton and this is a shawl so this would be worn as a headscarf because Somalia is 90% I, I guess I don't know there could be other other religions but for mo for the most part Muslim so this would be a head shawl that the women would wear predominantly if they're married so I'm doing a little bit of research about his culture so that's quite nice it's beautiful material now this is a traditional batik style now I don't know who made this but there's an end so he's just got me you know you could use this as a sarong um, or make it into something so he was trying to tell me about the dresses the women wear casually around the house that are that when they're relaxing and they're not in the public eye and I think he meant that this was the sort of material you would use to make it and I think they're like a like a, a shift you know just with not thick um, no sleeves just little um, not thin sh shoulder straps but wider you know just shoulder just a shift that is comfortable breezy and generally the married women wear full length if they go out in public I mean they're all different now it's different culturally than what it ever has been of course because they generally when they're married will cover most of their body um, however there's a lot of Westerners that visit and they have a lot of access to the internet so they're changing so I just I absolutely love this little feathery type of dotty dot work design now this did I say um, this feels like a cotton it doesn't feel plasticky or anything it just feels like a beautifully woven cotton um, not sure if the men wove this but however this is definitely traditional Somalian now the men in the villages weave these and he said something about the women even the men sew if it's in um, the women in rural areas might sew their own clothes, but if you're in the city and you're getting something tailored, the men make these and it's it's woven. It's actually, they weave it. And this is a very traditional um, colour and design, the stripes. And this one is often worn as a part of marriage, uh, wedding dress. So they would make uh, and so often there's a it's just a one shoulder cross cross crossed over just one shoulder and they would wear that as part of their wedding outfit it's beautiful and I love it and it's actually um, I asked him if it was silk but he didn't know so they do use a bit of polyester and a bit of silk and a bit of cotton so you know I can't I don't know it's it's, it breaks easy, so I don't know if that gives away what the material is made of. But this is the traditional, so I love it. It's beautiful. And so even though I didn't want a whole heap, because I don't know how to, how or where to use it, um, 
I've already started using it in little bits of projects. So a couple of years ago, Anne, Handmade by Anne, did a slow stitch book and I did one and I'd sold it and someone really loved it so much so she's commissioned a second one. So I've done it a little bit differently than my original one. I've done like a Copic style of binding and there will be a cover that goes on over. What I've used is some old flannel sheets and I've folded them in half and then sewn them as a signature. So this is one. So you've got, if it was open, it would be a square. So I folded in half and then in half again and that's one signature. So I'm working through it. Um, still a lot of work to go, but I'll show you what I've got so far. And this is a little tag, Joy. This is that beautiful hummingbird material that uh, I've shown before in a Thread Thursday. And I'm still following the guideline from the original slow stitched book that Anne did. Um, so this page was pistol stitch, um, rough edges. Actually, it wasn't pistol stitch, it was, it was Suffolk puffs and rough edges. Um, this one was a tag in a pocket. And this one was start your book easily, slowly. <laughs> so I was having a bit of fun with the um, Suffolk puffs, doing a few pistol stitches out of them, doing a little bit of a, a, not, a turkey work, but without cutting it. Okay, so this one was um, bullions, weaving, so I've woven through different things, and pistol stitch. Um, I've added in a bit of this silk, and just little bits and pieces. Okay, so this is the page I'm up to, so I've added in this Somali material, and it was circles and blanket stitch. So I haven't quite finished because these will all be decorated with more blanket stitch. Um, this has got blanket stitch around the edge to hold on a bit of this material. Fly stitch, maybe it was fly stitch, blanket stitch and circles. So. Um, on the when we did the book, we got a bit of wire and made it into a circle, put it down as our kind of our template, and then we did all sorts of different things. So I'm covering it over a bit this side, um, but it's designed to see through here, and then when this is folded back, you can see through here. So um, I'm yet to do this page this page and I've already done this page and I've pinned it to the back and this is buttons and um, buttons and I'm not quite sure what this one was there's pistol stitch on here there's French knots in here might have just been buttons and straight stitch Anyway, whatever it was. All right, so um, that'll be sewn to there. I'll be sewing these together. And then this will be inside and there'll be a cover. Haven't got to that, so I'm not quite sure where that's going just yet. But it was fun to use a bit of the Somali material. Just show you this bit of gorgeous material that I've been cutting down. So it's quite thick. It's a bit like, um, I think it was the same as that hummingbird. It's like a, you know, you can use it for outdoor cushions or um, cushions. It's a real thick covering type of tapestry type of, type of um, material so anyway that's beautiful I loved it when I saw it in the shop so I thought I'll get half a meter while it was on, while it was on sale for half price so now I'm going to put at the end of this video 
my photos and little bits of footage. Uh, I might do a little voiceover and talk a little bit about the artists. And that'll be it for Thread Thursday. So I hope you enjoy me showing you the, the artists and what I saw while I was in sale. And I might even put in a little picture of the river with the boats as well. Lovely time, very nice and relaxing. There was a little band playing when we were having coffee and it was just gorgeous. So without further ado, I will add them on now. Okay, so the first exhibition I saw and what I really went to see was Penny Davis's. She uses silicon moulds cast from all sorts of objects, industrial devices, plugs, all sorts of things like that. So here is some of the work and it's very lacy and delicate even though it's very plasticky. And I just love the way that they were floating as if we were underwater all through the gallery as you walk through. So there's sort of plugs and bottle tops and all kinds of things that she's cast. More like a sea anemone that one, but look, some of them were quite large. Really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful works. And even though this was what I went to see, um, I was surprised to find a textile artist there as well. Next artist is Anamika Mean, and I've slowed down the footage, and apologies for my terrible phone footage. I really would have loved to have had a proper camera there. But this was such a densely beautiful textural experience to see. Now, Anamiki, her specialty has always been uh, insects, and she uses labels. So one of her major things is using a lot of old clothing labels to get the layers and the denseness of um, texture within her works. So I've tried my best to capture a few of the highlights and slow it down so you can see some of the details. Now Anamiki lives in Sale, so she is actually a local artist to that area. And I'm going to link a little bit of footage of her talking about her 3D gallery below in the description box. So Anamiki originated from the Netherlands and is now well into her... Oh, um, I guess she's past 80 now, so she's got an impressive body of work. And look at that gorgeous moth and the way that the colours have been used with different labels to create different areas of the moth in the body, the wings. It's just beautiful. I don't think I've seen any work like this before. I could have walked around ten times, I think. <laughs> but just beautiful, beautiful work. So like I said, I will link below um, Anamiki walking around the gallery and talking about her exhibitions there and this I think she says this is her sixth exhibition and um, it's just so wonderful to see how supportive the local gallery has been of her work of the local artist. So I loved the white tags all along the spine of this one. Um, I can't recall exactly what the animal is it looks a bit shrimp-like or prawn-like to me, but it could be a fly of some description with its wings closed. It's all about nature with Anamiki. So there's moths, animals from um, bird life, nature, and she just loves all that stuff. But she'll uh, let her explain more about it in her little footage down below. Here I'm just getting a few close-ups of both painted and stitched works. Manipulation of different materials, mark making, even the uh, banksia here, the way it's been done. With lots of negative space, the sketches. Really couldn't... Um, really the scope of it you had to be there in person 
Um, these uh, flies um, all had some quilting underneath and some batting. And then I love the way that the gum leaves actually come outside of the picture here. They're really breaking that fourth wall, so to speak. Look at that. Just amazing the way that it comes into a 3D effect. Yeah, so sorry about the sh shonky uh, camera work here, but the heron, herons, um, beautiful, the feathers on the hessian. And she talks about hessian being one of her earliest explorations. So yeah, go and have a look at that little footage, these little birds, all, all coming up out of the work with a variety of thread making so um, I was just also fascinated so they, they had a variety of hand stitch and machine stitch and I was just fascinated by these cabinets with all her collections of tags, buttons, old um, bone work, sewing stuff, lots of antique stuff so I hope you enjoyed that and this is just the little look at the last little uh, birds here and please go and watch the video below and I will speak to you later. Bye for now.